Curious about why you're gaining a lot of excess weight? Why you're having hot flashes and night sweats? I've got you covered in this episode. I'm gonna lay out the hormonal changes that take place during menopause and then discuss the consequences that this has on your muscle mass and your body composition. Before we get into the details of this, I wanna take an opportunity to thank Hone Health for making this entire menopause fitness series possible. If you're interested in having a conversation about hormone replacement therapy, check out the link below. All of my advice is for educational purposes only. It's not meant to be taken as medical treatment or a diagnosis. So when you ask women about menopause, and what they experience or what they think they're going to experience. You're gonna hear things like night sweats, hot flashes, maybe osteoporosis and an increased risk for cardiovascular disease. Now, some will mention weight gain, but very few women are aware of what happens to their muscle. Remember, our foundational principle throughout our entire series is that muscle equals health and excess body fat equals sickness. So if we look over a woman's life and we're gonna make menopause just the, the anchoring point, we have three different phases. We have pre-menopause and then we have post-menopause. And then we have this interim that takes a woman from pre to post and I'm gonna to refer to that as the menopause transition. Other people will use the term perimenopause and they're very similar term. Now I'm also gonna just give you an average age of when the menopause transition happens. For most women, but not all women, this will happen in the late 40s to early 50s. But to be clear, some women go through the menopause transition years earlier. Some women go through this years later. So it could be early 40s for some, could be mid 50s for others, or even late 50s. So when we look at the physiology of menopause, it's really about a woman's fertility and follicular egg production. I've had two girls. When my girls were born, they were born with about one to two million eggs in their body. And that is their entire supply throughout their entire life. By the time a girl reaches puberty, she only has about 25% of her eggs remaining, or about 400,000. By the time a woman reaches her late 30s, only 2% of this egg supply remains, and there might only be about 25,000. And when a woman reaches menopause, at that point, she has no viable egg. So what does this mean for hormone changes during menopause? because this dwindling egg supply has a direct impact on hormones. So we're gonna look at that next, and then again, we're gonna move to what are the implications of this for muscle and body fat. So the hormones that are affected by menopause, I'm gonna highlight the main four. FSH, also referred to as follicular stimulating hormone, estrogen, luteinizing hormone, and progesterone. Now I'm really gonna focus on two of these and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in a moment, but we're really gonna focus on FSH and estrogen. In the ovaries, these eggs are contained within protective sacs and these sacs are called ovarian follicles. Notice what I said, follicle stimulating hormone. So you can see a kind of a role here. FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, has a role in forming these protective sacs. These are follicle containing eggs. So FSH has that role. Now, as this follicle matures in the ovaries, it releases a lot of estrogen. And once estrogen is released, what happens is that goes back to the brain where FSH is released and it tells the brain, stop producing and releasing FSH. So this ovulation process also will stimulate one other hormone that you've probably heard of called progesterone. And progesterone also, once it's released, goes back to the brain and also says, hey, we don't need as much FSH, follicle stimulating hormone being released. Now here's the hormonal haywire that will occur during me the menopause transition specific to FSH and estradiol. On average, during the menopause transition, follicle stimulating hormones start to rise. They get a lot higher. In contrast, estrogen during the menopause transition, those levels start to get a lot lower. So why? Why does follicle stimulating hormone get high? And 
When do these changes occur? Well, let me talk about why first. And here's how I explain this to myself where, where it makes sense to me. Follicle stimulating hormone is released from the brain to get an egg ready to, to be mature and then to produce or to induce ovulation. When you don't have any more eggs, it's almost as if the brain doesn't sense that and it says, hey, we want this egg to mature and follicle stimulating hormone is what does this and it just keeps pumping it out and pumping it out. But remember, menopause is an age where we don't have viable eggs. So FSH levels continue to rise. Now, when does this happen? Well, about seven years before the menopause transition, we start to see a general uptick in follicle stimulating hormone. Then about two to three years, or right when the menopause transition starts, most women will be mid to late 40s, we see a really big inflection point where follicle stimulating hormones continue to rise. Over the course of the menopause transition, they continue to rise and get higher and higher. In postmenopause, we continue to see and observe high follicle stimulating hormone levels compared to the premenopausal state. All right, now what about estrogen and specifically estradiol? Well, what we see with this hormone is that as a woman enters the menopause transition, there's a initial abrupt decrease in estrogen production. And this makes sense because remember, this follicle containing egg is what releases estrogen or a lot of the body's estrogen. Now that we don't have these eggs maturing, we don't have as much estrogen being produced. And over the four or five years of the menopause transition, on average, estrogen levels continue to decline. It's important to note two different things happening here. FSH going high, estrogen going low. Why are these hormone changes so important? Like, so what? So what if these are changing over the menopause transition? Researchers published a study in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, and here's what they said in their, in their published research. The extreme decline in estradiol and rise in follicle-stimulating hormone that accompany the menopause transition are plausible mechanisms of gain in central adiposity. So let me, let me say that more simply. This hormonal change is causing a body composition change, and we're gonna look into that in the next episode. But essentially, researchers are linking this hormonal changing environment to gaining body fat, particularly in the midsection in women. We're also gonna look at its impact on, on uh, muscle mass as well. We just looked at what happens to the relevant hormones and how they change during the menopause transition. In the next episode, I'm gonna tell you the impacts that this has on your body composition and health. Now I'm curious, what changes have you noticed during your menopause transition? I would love for you to comment and educate me on what's happening in your body below. Thanks again, Hone Health, and I'll see you in the next episode.